Well, hello and welcome everyone. My name is Celeste Harrison and on behalf of National Geographic Education, I am so excited to welcome everyone to today's Explorer Classroom. At National Geographic, we believe in the power of exploration and of wonder to change the world. And the very heart of the National Geographic community is of course our National Geographic Explorers. National Geographic Explorers are cutting edge scientists. They're researchers, filmmakers, photographers, adventurers, uh, storytellers, and they all share one thing. They all use their power and their voice for good. These Explorer Classroom events connect students around the world with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and extended Q&As. We're now hosting Explorer Classroom every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, in addition to all of our normal events. So if you'd like, I can see you right back here on Monday for some more Explorer Classroom. But for today, it happens to be Endangered Species Day. Endangered Species Day is a time for us to think extra, extra specially about the plight of wildlife around the globe. And on this 2020 Endangered Species Day, we have a very special opportunity to hear about PhotoArc's 10,000th species announcement right from the source. Today, we're very lucky to be connecting with the fabulous Joel Sartore, the founder of the PhotoArc. Joel is a photographer on a mission. He's committed to taking portraits of every single species living in the world's zoos, aquariums, and wildlife sanctuaries. That's more than 15,000 different species. Today, we're gonna hear a little bit about Joel's recent escapades with animals. And again, we're gonna be some of the first people in the world to learn about his newest addition to the photo arc, his 10,000 species. But before we get to that, I do want to acknowledge that we're joined on screen by a great group of students. And we've got about a thousand more students registered to participate along with us on YouTube today. I'm so glad to have so many of you out there. And today our students are representing Alabama, Arizona, California, Colorado, the District of Columbia, Delaware, Florida, Hawaii, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, North Carolina, Nebraska, Joel's home state, uh, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Ohio, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Virginia, and Washington, plus Canada, Guatemala, Peru, Romania, Singapore, South Africa, the UAE, and the United Kingdom. We've got a couple of special shout outs to give today. Shout out to Amir, to Annabelle and Gareth, Atticus, Daniel, Sarah, and Carola, the Holtzman family, Katya, the Langhorn family, Louise, Max and his mom, um, Mr. Capiche's first, first graders, Mrs. McLeaf's class, Mrs. Ochoa's class, and Mrs. Burke's class, uh, Mrs. Lee's sixth graders, Sean and Skye. Wonderful to have you all out there. If I missed your state or your country or your group name, please say hello and introduce yourself in the YouTube chat sidebar. We'd love to say hi, but that is plenty from me. It's now time to turn it over to Joel for today's Explorer Classroom lesson. Thanks, Celeste. Hi, everybody. Nice to be here. Um, you know, I thought I'd show you a few pictures since that's what I do, right? So we're gonna do a share screen. It's all kind of new to me. There we go. All right. So um, I want to just show you guys a little bit, you know, just kind of how how we got here. So I'm uh, I've been with National Geographic a long time, thirty years or so, and uh, the first seventeen I did work from the field, and and that means you go out and you end up like this sometimes. This these are my feet covered in mosquitoes for a story on Alaska's North Slope. So I don't really miss being in the field that much sometimes, although I did do 30 stories that way. And then about 15 years ago, I decided to take a different course and start doing photo arc pictures. Photo arc pictures are portraits done in zoos and aquariums and wildlife rehab centers um, of animals against black and white backgrounds, kind of like um, school portraits, high school portraits, whatever. And it gives us a chance to look animals in the eye. And today we announced that with this cat, the Guinea from Chile in South America, we have crossed the 10,000 species barrier, which is a big deal for us. That's two thirds of the way done. We figure there's about 15,000 species in the world's captive facilities. And the Guinea photographed at Fauna Andina, a wildlife rehab center, a nonprofit 
in central South Chile is the 10,000s. This was an interesting animal because um, they had trained it to walk into my little cloth shooting tent, which is the little tent you see behind me here. Um, and, and he just went in there and purred away. He was hand raised because he was, he was raised as a baby um, from, he was an orphan. And they took him in and he was completely comfortable around people, so comfortable that he vocalized and he purred and would kind of meow a little bit and chuff a bit. And uh, it was sounds that people hadn't really heard in modern times, let alone record. So today through geographic Instagram and various social media platforms, we are sharing those sounds with the world for the first time. So that's awesome. That's a great thing. So what does, what does that many species look like? Well, here's just a little taste of what they look like. So we, we tend to hear a lot of kind of tough news, sad news, don't we? But I'm here to tell you that there's a lot out there we're saving and it's exciting. Sometimes the world works a little too exciting. This was the last shoot I did before the pandemic. I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'd photographed a polar bear on black and white at the Albuquerque Zoo, also known as the Albuquerque Biopark or ABQ Biopark. And then I went to this place called the Rattlesnake Museum in downtown old Albuquerque. And we had a rattlesnake promptly get into my bag right off the bat. We had to fish him out and we got him to sit and there he is looking pretty, right? And um, he was, you know, he was just doing his thing as nature does. Nature is amazing it, it, and species inhabit just about every environment on the planet, almost every environment on the planet. And they're so vital to us, right? They're so vital to us. Bats have been on my mind a lot lately because it's thought that the coronavirus might have come from a bat that was being eaten by somebody sold in what they call a wet market or a wildlife market. If this pandemic, global pandemic, does not close down global wildlife markets, I don't know what will. They really do need to be shut down as we push into the last great forests, especially tropical forests. All these, these mammals have a lot of viruses and some of the birds too, that they could give to us. So this could be the first of many pandemics if we don't cut it out. We really need to behave ourselves. I'm truly hoping that when we emerge from this pandemic that we're better, that we've been more thoughtful and surely we don't wanna do everything the same way again, do we? I don't think so. In my 15 years or so photographing for the photo art, we've photographed several animals that have gone extinct you're seeing them now. This does, not, this does not depress me to the extent you would think. I'm sad, sure, but I'm mostly angry that we would do anything to extinction because it's so irreversible. And we need these species to keep the planet going, especially plants, tropical rainforests, for example, not only cool the planet, but they regulate the rainfall we get in places like Nebraska, where I live. They regulate the rainfall that we need to grow crops. This is a big deal. So I shifted from doing field work, animals in the wild, to these animals on black and white backgrounds as a way of getting your attention, getting the world's attention. Eye contact is what we humans or primates are all about. We like to look animals in the eye uh, and size things up, size up other creatures. What I've learned from looking at all these animals over the years is that they're very intelligent and they're a lot like us. You know, they're playful or malicious. They're thoughtful, they can be scared, uh, aggressive and angry. You know, they're just, they're just a lot like us. And they're very smart, they're very smart. They made it through all this time, just fine. Um, we use the black and white backgrounds also because it's a great leveling device. It's an equalizer, isn't it? Without any size comparison on these black and white backgrounds, a mouse 
he's every bit as big as, big as an elephant, right? These corrupt pool fish that are no bigger than my finger, well, they're even bigger than a grizzly bear. So we really like using the photo arc technique to highlight the smaller species that we never even think about, the sparrows, the toads, the newts, the salamanders, these animals that are very small that really would not have their story told without the photo arc to do it. The other thing we like to do is we like to anthropomorphize animals. That's a mouthful, isn't it? We like to make animals look similar to people so that people will react to them a little bit more. The goal is to get the public to understand that biodiversity comes in all shapes and sizes. This guy's the size of a, of a salt shaker, believe it or not. Very small, one of the world's smallest primates. Biodiversity comes in all forms. Some of it's super cute, like this baby tapir or baby koalas. Some of it looks fierce or scary, uh, but it's, it's all important and all are equally critical if we wanna save the planet going forward. Why is that important, saving the planet? This is a baby pangolin, by the way. It's a kind of mammal, but very ancient form. It's covered with scales, much like um, these scales are made out of the same substance as our fingernails. Why is it important to save all these animals and plants too? Well, because as they go away, so could we. They need a healthy planet, clean air, clean water, stable climate, and uh, plenty of food to eat. So do we. So it's kind of silly to think that as they go away, we won't be harmed. I think we will be harmed. The good news is that of the animals you're seeing now, most of them can be saved, but it's gonna take some thought. We're gonna to need to be thoughtful and save big blocks of habitat around the world to really stabilize our climate for sure. So with that, with that, I'm happy to either show more pictures or answer questions. I could, I could go on and on, I guess. Cool advice. Well, Joel, if our students out there have more questions or they just want to see your photos, is there somewhere on the internet they can go for that? Sure, they can go to they can go to photoarc.org on the National Geographic Society site. Uh, they can come to joelsartori.com which is my website. If they just type in PhotoArc or Joel Sartori on Google, up it will come. There's lots of opportunities there to look around. And if people have questions, they can always drop me a line. There's a contact or an info button on our website. I'm happy to answer questions. Amazing. Well, for everyone out there watching, check out Explore Classroom as well as many, many more free educational resources at natgeoed.org. We hope to see you at our upcoming events on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern. We'll be focused on sea turtle conservation. I hope to see you there. But for now, I just want to say thank you so much to Joel Sartori. Congratulations on your 10,000. And now